Hey, 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 what's going on, everybody? Hey, this is Christopher Harold, guys. And uh, right now, I'm doing an impromptu episode in the uh, Chris Harold show. Uh, this, this is not planned. It's not script. Uh, uh, don't even have the intro and everything set up, you know, uh, appropriately and everything like that. Uh, something we may go back and add later. Uh, but yeah, this is not planned, uh, at all. And, uh, you know, there's no advertisements, nothing like that, uh, which you know, nothing wrong, nothing wrong with any of that stuff. Right. Um, but reason why is because I wanted to pop on really quick just to have a conversation with you, a, a real heart to heart conversation, uh, due to, you know, some recent events that, are, that, that things that, that have happened and transpired recently, like really in the last 24 hours or so, uh, I know, uh, a couple of days ago, well, not a couple of days ago, but a few hours ago, uh, actually last night, my wife had sent me a, a message. She sent me a message and I was real, I, I was in a class at the moment. And really didn't have a, a lot of time to take a look at it. it. Had a lot of things going on at the moment. And and then I sent her a message later on last night. It was like, you know, question marks. You know, what is this? And she had told me that uh, another young person just committed suicide. And 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 this and and then when I kind of did the research on it, actually early this morning, I discovered it was a, a young lady. Who was uh, it's Miss USA out of North Carolina? Uh, I think her name was Chelsea, first name I believe, and she was like 30 years old, and apparently, you know, she jumped off a building in New York. And when you know, when I when I kind of did a little, little more uh, re research on that, it was basically explaining that uh, she had everything going on, right? You know, she had the great job, great career, uh, fame. Uh, the exposure, I'm sure, I'm sure some fortune came along with it, you know, just everything, you know, beautiful looks and everything, right? And and I guess on, on the surface and on the outside, it appeared that everything was just marvelous. Everything was just perfect, grandioso, right? But obviously there were some things uh, missing on the inside that most people, most of us tend to miss. And I believe I have credibility to talk about this topic because those of you who know me, those of you who have been following me a while, you know, very transparent about my story. You know, and that's one thing about me. Like, like what, what I'm talking about right now, I can tell you this for a fact. Number one, this conversation we're having right now, most people in the church won't talk about. It's a taboo topic. Uh, most most time you have a conversation like this with people in the quote unquote traditional church. The thought is, hey, is, is someone going to heaven or hell if they commit suicide? It's more focused on that. The more uh, deep, the deep down, you know, challenges that are, that are taking place, right? The spiritual issues that are taking place, right? And that's why I want to have a conversation with you about. Also, number two, most folks in my area of influence, most folks uh, who are entrepreneurs, online entrepreneurs specifically, would never talk about this. Why? Because it doesn't line up with your agenda, right? It doesn't line up with your marketing efforts, right? So most folks would never talk about this. And what happened? People live in a bubble. People pretend that these things don't take place, right? And people are just caught up in their own world. But this is real. And I, I'm not like everybody else. I'm, all my clients do this note. I'm very transparent. I'm real. I think that's one of the reasons why people are attracted to me and probably why you listen to me and why you watch me and follow me as well because I'm different. I choose to be real. And this is a real topic because I've shared this story uh, with my clients and some uh, actually I've shared it too in one of our uh, master class money marketing master class and also I get visible virtual master class but I shared this story that I, you know because I wanted to commit suicide a number of times and and so I so I have some credibility to talk about this topic because I it, I know how how people feel I, I I understand by I understand someone wanting to take their own life why because I want to take my own life on more than one occasion, on more than one occasion. And and I want you guys to understand this right now too, that uh, we gotta get to the point where we're not judging people who want to take their own lives and try to, because there's some things that are missing, right? But we have to come from a place of understanding, right? Uh, because I understand, I know how you feel. If, if you're someone right now who's feeling that way, because literally, 
Not that long ago, I had a pistol in my hand in my office. Uh, I remember it was a cold night in December of 2019. And, and I remember having a pistol in my office. Outside of my office, I was hearing my kids playing. And what did I do? I, I was depressed. I was in a dark place. I was mad at God. I was disappointed how things were happening in my business. Even my wife and I was having some issues and challenges too. And I picked up the phone and I actually called the suicide hotline. And when I called the suicide, suicide hotline, they told me that I was number 54. Listen to what I just said. They told me that I was caller 54. That meant there were 53 other people ahead of me who also was having thoughts of taking a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Now, here's the deal, guys. I am a believer. I don't call myself a Christian anymore, right? And I may use that term here just to attract people to, uh, you know, to this video, but I am a believer. I am a kingdom citizen, right? Uh, and so I believe in Christ. I believe in God. I am a kingdom citizen. You understand what I'm saying? And so, so yes, even believers, even those in the kingdom can have suicide thoughts. When you have all these different mixed things going on in life, you know, you have setbacks, you have disappointment, you have uh, loneliness, you have uh, unachieved goals, right? You have the, these expectations you put on yourself, you don't accomplish it. But more importantly, what happens is that when you don't have the peace of God, I understand this, guys, I want you to get, get this. I'm not a religious person. I left the world of religion a couple of years ago. Once I truly came into the light, and became a kingdom citizen. Okay. I'm not a religious person, so this is not a religious message. This is to everyone who's created in the image of God, which is you, right? No matter what your religious philosophies are, Islam, Christianity, uh, Buddhism, Hinduism, right? Or whatever it might be, or atheism, right? You are created in the image of God. This message is for you because I'm going to share some things with you right now for, for a couple more minutes that I want you to take to heart because I truly believe there's a disconnect out there and it's up to us, up to me. I know it's my kingdom mandate and I've been called as an ambassador of Christ to reconcile man back to God because you can have everything. Listen, you can have, uh, I, I, I can tell you this firsthand. You can go from zero to multiple six figures in a business quickly. But then when things change, that depression can set back in, right? The feeling of loneliness can set back in. The feeling of not being accepted can set back in. You know, that, 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 that feeling of not feeling your purpose can set back in. See, the ebbs and flow of life are real. And I can tell you this first and foremost, if I had not been in a relationship with my creator, I would have killed myself years ago. I thank God, you know, also he gave me a wife, he gave me kids, and it made me think as well. But if I did not have a relationship with God, if, I, if he did not give me a big picture focus, because I wanted to kill myself several times. Several times. Several times. And without the peace of God, I understand why someone wants to do the same. Now, listen, we can get, seek help. Seek help. But after you get help, I'm telling you, it's something beyond the help. There's only so much we can do as humans for one another. We have to get reconnected back to our creator. We can go out and get this help. And a lot of times you get some outward secular help. Right. But I'm telling you, unless we take the next step. And seek our relationship with our creator. Why are we here on this planet? Unless we seek that. It's going to be very difficult to get past the dark times, the dark days. Because that's, un unfortunately, life, life is, life is like seasons. Right? You're going to have great moments in life where everything is awesome. Your family relationship is awesome. Your health is awesome. Your business is awesome. Everything is just perfect. You're on cloud nine. 
but also you're going to have seasons where everything is not awesome, where your health is not awesome, your things going on in your family is not awesome, things going on in your life and business are not awesome, relationships, married, right? You're going to have those dark times. And it's going to feel like other the folks out there are not there for you. It's going to feel like those have abandoned you. Why? Because most of us, let's keep it real, we're focused on ourselves, right? And most of us are deep down inside like, wow. Think about, man, I wish such and such would call me. I wish such and such would check on me. But well, realize such and such is focused on their own issues. They focus on themselves. As humans, we're self-centered individuals, right? So we have to do better, right? I have friends that I reach out to, right? They don't reach out to me. I'm like, well, what if I was trying to commit suicide? You don't return my call. You don't return my text. What if I was wanting to kill myself, you know? But we're so consumed amongst ourselves that, Someone calls us, someone texts us, we go switch in the voicemail, we, we, we look at it and keep going, right? And we have no idea what's, what people are thinking about. We have to do better on that front. But let me read a couple of passages for you. The first one is uh, Matthew 10, because if, 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 let me read this. Matthew 10, uh, oh, sorry, Matthew 11, Matthew 11, verse 28. This is Jesus speaking. Uh, the creator in flesh. And he says, come to me all. Now all means everyone. All does not mean religious people. All does not mean Christians. All means all created beings. Every human being on this planet is created in the image of God. Every human being. We're all connected. We're all brethren. All of us, no matter what your philosophy or what your beliefs are. We may look different. We may talk different. We may uh, have different philosophies. We may, we may eat differently. But all of us are brethren. All of us, black, white, green, yellow, all in between. So it says, all who are weary and heavy laden. Now, this word actually means, it means all who work to exhaustion. In the literal Greek sense, it means all who work to exhaustion. Think about that. Are you working yourself to exhaustion? Are you trying to accomplish things in life to keep it with the Joneses? Are you, are you, are you working yourself so hard to prove to people? Are you trying to be accepted by mankind? Trust me, I know how you feel. We want to be accepted by others. So you're working your butt off to get accepted by family, to get accepted by peers, to get accepted by others, to get to think to get accepted by God. So Jesus said, those who are working themselves to exhaustion, do you work yourself to exhaustion to accomplish these awards, to accomplish these things that are vain? These things are vanity that we chase after, but we chase after. They're real nonetheless. Right. So Jesus said, come to me, all who work themselves to exhaustion, and I will give you rest. This word rest in the Greek is anapayo, A-N-A-P-A-U-O. And it means refresh, take ease. Like, think about it. The powerful thing about a vacation is what? You refresh yourself. You take ease. Jesus is telling you, come to me, who work themselves to exhaustion, to try to impress man, to try to uh, prove to others, to try to get your, uh, your, your, you're trying to get your, uh, your identity through other things material things, other things. He said, I will give you vacations. I will give you refreshments. I will give you ease. He said, let's come to me. Come back to your creator. We can't figure this stuff out, guys, on our own, with our own human philosophies, our own human education. We have to go back to our original source, right? Our original source is God. We cannot fix our problems with the same problems that created it. We have to go outside of ourselves and it's getting back to our creator. If my phone goes bad, and I saw this phone started malfunctioning. It would be foolish of me to try to fix this phone myself, right? Why? Because I did not design this phone. I did not manufacture this phone. I did not create this phone. So what should I do? Go back to the source. Go find the source that created this phone, right? And see how to fix it. Listen, we need to go back to our source. All of us as humans need to go back to our source. And there's only one source. There's not a million sources. There's not, you know, uh, many roads. There's only one source. There's only one way to the one source, and that's through Jesus Christ. Now, verse 29 says, take my yoke upon you. Now, what does that mean? Take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you implies there are other yokes to take. It implies that the other yokes you can have on, what is a yoke? A yoke, you know, is, is a harness that farmers would use, you know, put on the oxen to get, kind of like, you know, to get them to move, get them to plow the land. And this harness, you know, it keeps them uh, in place. Well, Jesus said, take my yoke. By saying my yoke means that I have a different yoke than what you have on. What yokes have you put on yourself? 
to try to achieve, to try to be, to try to, to try to be seen, to try to uh, get your meaning. What yokes have, what unnecessary yokes have you put on yourself? We all do it. We all do it, you know, for the fame, for the fortune, for the, for, for, for the feeling of, of arrival, right? So what, what yokes have you put on yourself? Jesus said, take my yoke. So it means here's the deal. You cannot wear two yokes. You can only, want, only, only wear one yoke at a time. That's the beautiful thing about this. You cannot wear two yokes. You only wear one yoke at a time. So take your yoke off and put my yoke upon you and begin to learn from me. Why? He said, because I am gentle and humble in heart and your mind. And you shall find, there's that word again, rest. You shall find rest. You shall find what? Refreshness, vacation, ease for your souls. Your souls, your innermost being, who you are. You are a soul. You're not just a physical body. You're not just a spirit. You are a soul. It's your personality. It's your emotions. It's who you are. That's what we won't rest at. Every single human being on this planet is seeking rest. It's seeking the peace of God. That's what we're seeking. And we do other things to try to get it. But we're all seeking it. And Jesus said, verse 30, he says, what? For my yoke, again, my yoke, not your yoke, but my yoke, not their yoke, but my, but my yoke, not his yoke, not her yoke. Not society's yoke, not the media's yoke, not everybody else's yoke, not the church's yoke, not the pastor's yoke, but my yoke, your creator's yoke. It's easy, easy lemon squeezy. It means kindly or pleasant in the literal Greek sense. Is my yoke is pleasant? It's kindly to you. And my load, my not your load, but my load is like reminds me of the passage in Peter who says. Cast all your cares upon God. It means throw it. It's like it takes the, takes the impression of if you had a donkey or a horse and you put a load on it, right? You cast that load on that donkey or horse. It takes on that same meaning. He said, for my, my load is light. My load is light. Hmm. Let, let, let me read another passage for you guys. So I, want you, so I want you to get this. It's all about coming to a relationship with your creator, guys. It's all about coming to a relationship with your creator. Okay, let me, let me read you another passage here. Uh, Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Okay. Uh, Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Let's read that. It's, it says, Be anxious, be worse for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Now, what I want to focus on is verse 7. Verse 7 says, and the peace of God. The peace of God. We all want the peace of God. What is peace? In the Greek, it means irony. Irony. And it says the peace of God means the tranquility and rest. See, there it is again. Tranquility and rest. It said that peace, that, that rest, that tranquility. Think of that word. Something that's tranquil, it reminds me of an ocean or a pond, right? If you go out to some place where it's, no, it's not noisy, away from the hustle and bustle of life, right? And it could be a forest, right? It could be a mountaintop. It could be a pond or an ocean, right? And just tranquil. Jesus said, that's, that's what I give you. The storms of life can be happening all around us. Business can be failing. Relationships can be failing. Friends can desert you. Money can be dwindling, right? Opportunities can be disappearing. But he said, in the midst of all that, in the midst of all that, I'm going to give you tranquility. I'm going to give you peace. I'm going to give you refreshness. I'm going to give you ease. I'm going to give you vacation. Because he says, this peace, this irony, it continually surpasses all your thinking, all your understanding, everything that makes sense to you. It passes it. It surpasses it. It's like a, it's like a race. And it just, and, and, and your logic, you are not logic to figure stuff out. Can I compare to the peace of your creator? I want you guys to truly get this. It's not about religion. I left the world of religion a couple years ago when God gave me his kingdom revelation. Jesus never came to earth to start a religion. It's a whole other conversation for a whole other day. It's about a relationship with your creator. That's where we get to peace. 
That's where you get your purpose. That's where you get your identity. That's where you get your rest. Everything else is temporary. It'll cover it up for a little while. But as you see, we can, we can cover up wounds. We, 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 we can put band-aids on wounds. But unless we deep down and get stuff fixed, get, get stuff healed, right? And, and we should seek help. Seek help. Seek help. But please let that help be someone that encourages you to seek your creator. To seek your creator. If anything, it would help you get a hope they're taking principles from the Bible, which is from your creator. I hope they're taking principles from that. But seek your creator, guys. He just said this, this, this peace surpasses all your understanding. It will guard your heart. It will guard your mind. It will protect you. Because it's all about what we think about up here, guys. So here's the deal, guys. I just want to pop on really quick. It's impromptu. It wasn't planned. It wasn't scripted. It's not part of my normal episode of my Chris Harrell show or anything else I'm doing. But I want to pop on because of the recent events. And because I can relate. And I'm very transparent to say that I'm a suicide survivor. And don't judge people for why they want to commit suicide. If I told somebody, I can, I can judge myself. And I'd be like, Chris, why you want to commit suicide for that? Yes, I did. Because you, you, we can minimize it why someone wants to end their own life. Don't minimize it. Don't minimize it. It may not be a big deal to you, but it's a big deal to them. And if any of you guys having thoughts like that, reach out to me. I know how you feel. I want to kill myself up several times. Reach out to me. I'm here. You know, this real talk. This is real talk. Reach out to me. Message me. Connect. We can hop on the phone. But my life changed that day. And I've had dark moments since that day, guys. It's not since 20, December 2019. Everything's been perfect. I want to kill myself many times before that. And I've had some depressing thoughts after that. But what I can say when I was on that phone call in December 2019, that cold night, and I was caller 54, I had an epiphany. And like I said, I was like, if I'm caller 54, that means that 53 other people wanted to kill themselves. And what did I do at that moment? I didn't stay on hold. I hung up the phone. I listened to my kids outside. And I cried. I, my eyes bawled out. I yelled. I screamed. I cussed. I fought with God. And then something happened after I got all this emotion out. That peace that I was telling you about, that tranquility rest, it overwhelmingly over, over, overcame me. And God told me three words, trust and obey. Trust and obey. Trust me and just obey what I'm telling you to do. He said, why? Because I love you. I care for you. I have plans for you to prosper you to your future and the hope. I'm going to use you as a conduit to impact thousands and thousands and thousands of millions of lives all across the world. I had no idea God wanted me to write this book. Did you see behind me right here? Kingdom Affirmations. It was written from post-suicide thoughts. I had no idea this book would go inside of prison walls. I had no idea this book would go in Canada and the UK and other countries. I had no idea this, this, this book would be, uh, some people are using it as a teaching tool. I had no idea. I wrote this book in 2020 and published this book. And it's about your identity. It's about how to activate the power of heaven on earth in your words. If you don't have a copy, go. actually this wasn't a sales pitch video, but if you don't have a copy, you can go get a copy right now by going to Kingdom Affirmations dot com go to kingdomaffirmations.com and get a copy but it will inspire you it will help you identify who you are your purpose why you're here what you should be doing and more importantly what your creator thinks about you because everything else can be great but if you're not connected to your creator everything else really falls short and what i'm going to do right now i'm going to ask the creator to impart his wisdom upon you. 
I'm going to ask your creator. If, if you don't know the creator, if you don't have a relationship with the creator, feel free to reach out to me. And I want to help you reconcile because you had a relationship with him bef before. You just maybe, maybe you don't remember it. You know, it's not about going to church. It's about being connected and reconciling to your creator. Become, coming into agreement with your creator so that way you can begin to do what you exactly should be doing here on earth and get this peace that surpasses all your understanding. I'm going to ask your creator right now, Lord God, if those are watching this video, listening to this podcast, wherever it might be, if they do not have a personal relationship with you, Lord, I'm asking you right now to grant it. Lord, you said we ask anything in your name according to your will, it shall be done. And right now, as a citizen of your kingdom, Right now, as a son of royalty, I'm asking you right now to bring in your other sons and daughters right now back to the kingdom, back to where they came from, back into right standing with you, back into right relationship with you, back into union with you right now, because I know that's your will. Because you say you don't, you don't desire for anyone to perish, but for all to have eternal life. So I pray right now, those, Father God, who have a deep depression thoughts, that we come against those thoughts, Thoughts of suicide, thoughts of ending it all. Please put the right people around them. Encourage them that, 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 that you got something better for them. Touch them right now, Holy Spirit. Move right now the sound of my voice. I don't know who's listening to this. I don't know where it's going, but if it's just one person, that's enough. I pray, Father God, that people realize that, no, you credit them to succeed. That you credit them to win. You credit them to be victorious. You credit them to be more than conquerors. And we can do that through the power you've given us through Christ Jesus. It's not about religion. It's not about works. It's not about rituals. It's about relationship and reconciling with our creator. So we can do the very purpose that we were put on this planet to do. So help us right now, Father God, to get true revelation of you. Touch right now, Father God. Move, Lord. And I pray that your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. If, if, if you prayed that prayer, if that impacted you, I would love to know. Leave a comment below, a message to me, inbox me, whatever the case may be, guys. But I just want to share. I know how you feel. If you're feeling dark, you feel you want to do that, reach out to help. Reach out to me. Reach out to me. And no matter what's going on, you know, God is telling me, don't, don't be so busy. Because the way I feel, I sometimes reach out to people and call people. They don't return my call. I'm like, how, how do you know I wasn't going through a, a deep bout there? How, how do you know that? It was my last hope phone call, my last hope text. How did you right? So we all we got to be those friends to others at the same time. It's a two way street. But more importantly, my friend, it's all about you getting a relationship with your creator. Please, I implore you to get right with your creator. To get right with your creator. God bless you.